12 months ago, COVID-19 changed our way of life, but we found a new normal, and we did it together. 702, let's walk the talk. We join futurist and partner at Tomorrow Today, that is Graham Codrington, as we reflect on how work coming into the home has affected has affected rather our lives. Hello, Graham. Hi, good afternoon, Azania. Nice to speak to you. Yes, yeah, great to have you on the show. Back uh, and these are this is an area you've been monitoring quite closely. You've been speaking, in fact, on exactly how things need to change, how schools, how corporations need to uh, change their their approach to work because so much of it is happening at home. You even go as far as to say that it's not work from home anymore. In fact, it's work from anywhere. Talk to me about the work from anywhere, anywhere revolution. Yeah, look, I, I think some people have a home that they can work from. Uh, they might have had a home that was big enough to move a few things around and create a workspace for all the people that need needed workspaces. <laughs> My story is very similar to the story we've, we've just heard. I uh, also had some daughters at university and... Uh, you know, needed to be doing work from home. And, and we are lucky enough to have a home that we were able to arrange in that way. We, we have the data, we, we have the furniture and the equipment. Not everybody's in that position, of course. Um, and of course, not everybody's job can be done from home. Yeah. Um, so there are a, a lot of people who uh, found working from home very, very tough. Uh, and I think that going forward, uh, those people who can work from home uh, might want to work from home for a day or two or three during the week. Yeah. Other people, though, might say, yes, I don't really want to work from home, but I also don't want to go back to the office. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think the real revolution taking place is less about whether you work from the office or you work from home, but it's more about a mindset shift. It, 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 and there's three, three things that change. It's where you work, and maybe there's a space in between. That's not the home and not the office. There's lots of options there. Then it's also a change in when you work, because of course we've realized if you've got kids at home, then maybe 8 a.m. in the morning is not a good time for a team meeting because you're setting your kids up for homeschooling maybe you should take a longer lunch break and spend time with your with your family and maybe working from five until seven in the morning is the best time for you because everybody else is asleep so the second phase then is well when you work might need to change and maybe we don't need office hours and the third one maybe we can come to that a little bit later because that's the big one yeah and that is well why are we measuring hours at all shouldn't we be shifting towards an outputs based environment because otherwise we're never going to find these boundaries between work and home again yes. so i think that's been the shift i've been watching and, and been fascinated with You're right so um how do we respond to this work from anywhere revolution then how should organizations respond how should schools respond well I, I, those are two very different uh, questions of course but i think that underlying that should be a shift in mentality to ask let, let's take the work environment maybe that's slightly easier than school yeah what what is it going to take for you to do your best work i don't understand why companies would think that that's a difficult or incorrect question to ask. Surely if we start with that question, what is it going to take for you to do your best work? Mm -hmm. And then whatever the answer to that question is, we give it a go. Maybe we don't know entirely. Uh, maybe we, you know, so for you, <laughs> Zani, you, you kind of have to be near a microphone between right. uh, one and three in the afternoon, right? But maybe it is possible for you to do it remotely from home. Maybe that's better, or maybe being in the studio is better. So, it, it, you know, the question is the right question. And then together, our employers, our employees, our colleagues, our leaders, our team members, we must look for the right answer. Mm -hmm. And I do think... It's slightly more difficult in an education environment, but I think it's the same question. And, and I think we need to ask, what is it going to take to educate our children best? And I think that we might discover, sure, there's a lot of things that happen at school that are about socialization. 
all the stuff you learn that's not in the curriculum. Teachers call it the hidden curriculum. Um, and, and it's those sports events and it's the way you engage with other people. Mm. But then I, if you look, so you want children probably to be at school as much as possible, young people to be with other young people. But do you have to have them in a classroom for five or six hours a day? Can't we put some of those lessons onto videos, let them watch it in their own time, and do something better with them sure. when they're actually on the school property? Right. Again, we understand this isn't going to be viable for every school, rural areas, township areas uh, might struggle with this. Or maybe this is part of the solution mm -hmm. that unlocks a solution for us in environments where schools do not have enough facilities for all the young people. But if we found a way to get cheap data and, 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 and cheap computers to young people, who knows what could happen? So I, I just think there's asking the question what is it going to take for us to do our best work is the starting point for how we go forward mm. um, and the concern right now is whether or not people are doing the work you know i imagine that there are bosses there are managers um, and just employers who feel the loss of control because they're unsure whether employees are doing their work while at at home um, and working from home is also and as you've just said it's challenging our understanding of what constitutes work and how this is measured so uh in building in efforts to build healthy teams or teams that function optimally what are the things mm. that we should be bearing in mind? So uh, what our team has seen uh, over the last few months yeah. is the validation of research that we've actually been doing for a while now. I've, I've worked uh, in a company uh, that I co-founded 20 years ago. We're in our 20th year, and we have never paid a cent in, in office rentals. So we've been virtual. We built ourselves to be virtual from the beginning. And um, it, it's not for everybody, and, and, and it's quite difficult to transition there, as a lot of people have found, yeah. if that's where your starting point isn't. But it, it's perfectly possible to run an organization without offices uh, and, and in a virtual way. And I, and I think we've seen um, five key uh, ingredients to a healthy team. But be, before I tell you what they are, and I'll, and I'll tell you very quickly and they'll make sense to you, and I'm, and I'm sure people will find value in thinking about them. I, you mentioned that some people are struggling, some managers are struggling with the loss of control, that some managers might be thinking their people are not working hard. Look, there are going to be a few people who've taken a few chances over the last few months. But my overwhelming experience, and I worked with over 80 companies last year, helping them through the crisis, not a single one of those companies was concerned that their employees were not working hard enough. In fact, most of them hmm. were concerned that their employees were working too hard mm -hmm. and, and that they were working too many hours and that they were going to be exhausted. So yes, of course, I'm, I'm sure there are a few lazy people in the system, but let's be honest, those people were probably hiding from you in the office anyway. Right. Um, it, it, this working from home thing uh, is, is, is not something that everybody suddenly just becomes lazy. Um, I think the opposite has happened. So if, if we want our teams to work, and a, and a team might be what's going on at your office, it might be what's happening at school, it might even be your own family. I think there are five key ingredients or pillars, if, if you prefer. The first is to create a sense of belonging. I mean, that's it's an obvious place to start. You've got to have a sense of being connected and part of a team. Now, think about a team that now has everybody working from home. They might have got together on a Monday morning and had a team meeting to get the week going. So what they've tried to do is just duplicate that with a Zoom or an MS Teams meeting on a Monday morning. And it hasn't worked because you can't just take what you used to do in a physical environment and dump it online. It's like schools asking children to put a school uniform on when they're learning from home. Mm -hmm. they, 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 they're doing the wrong thing. They're trying to take something that works when you're physically together 
and they haven't thought it through to say, what does it look and feel like in the digital world? So how do we create belonging? That is the first question. The second is mastery. Everybody needs to feel that they've got something to contribute, that they have got confidence in that contribution, and that they're continuing to develop and learn. There are a lot of people who are very good at their jobs, but very bad at using Zoom. And now suddenly they feel a lack of confidence. They, 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 they feel as if they're not contributing as well. So sometimes it's even just upgrading technical skills so that people can give their best masterful contribution. Hmm. The third area is autonomy. And this is the one that I think was the hidden problem before COVID, where did we really trust our people? to give their best when we weren't looking? Did we give them a sense of autonomy, a sense of agency? Did we really trust them? Now we have to. Yeah. Um, but I think that this is always going to be valuable, even if you go back to the office. The fourth area is generosity. And, and that's generosity towards your team. So autonomy doesn't mean it's it's every person for themselves and everybody must just do what they can do and then they, they're done. Generosity means caring, having empathy for others, contributing to the team. But it also means having a sense of generosity from your team to the rest of the world. And I think during COVID, the companies that have seen the need in society and responded to that have seen their staff members responding, yeah. um, saying this is a wonderful place to be involved, which leads to the final area, which is probably, to be honest, more of a foundation for everything. Mm -hmm. And that is having a sense of purpose. Again, that could be purpose, not in your vision, mission, values, purpose as a company, but in your personal purpose. And, and I think what we've learned during lockdown is that a lot of people were organizing their lives around their work. You chose where you lived based on your work. So you could drive to work and get home. You've got a whole cupboard full of clothes you haven't worn in a year because they're your work clothes. You don't wear those clothes if you're not at the office. And so we've got a whole lot of our life, including where our kids go to school and where we go to church or mosque or wherever, is based on where we work. Now we've realized it doesn't have to be. Mm -hmm. And we can get a renewed sense of purpose if we can find ways to put our work into our lives as just one of the jigsaw pieces rather than the the the, the, the thing that's the total right. and utter focus I of our lives. I love that and line. And that gives us a sense of purpose. Yes, I love that line, Graham. As you say, we can now put our work into life, not that work everything surrounds work, but rather yes. work becomes a component within a bigger, uh, the focus is the bigger life, the bigger purpose that you would like to have. And, and, work and it's just more than just work-life balance, mm -hmm. Zonia, because we're not getting that right. You can say work-life balance all you like, and then you realize you're not getting it right. We we can't see the boundary at the moment between work and life because actually the, ne the only boundary was the, the commute to the office and back. But right. now we realize we've got to build better integration. And I, and I think we've got to build our lives and then build our work around our lives. Mm -hmm. And an employer who will allow you to do that Oh, they will they will get motivated, engaged, and loyal uh, employees in the future. I'm certain of it. Oh, we have to build our lives and then build work around our lives. I think that's incredibly powerful. Thank you so much, Graham. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Seven o two, more than a radio station. Let's walk the talk.